Hey, what's up, everybody? This is an open discussion with C3 Films. My name is Chris, and this is Cheryl. And today we're going to be talking about the Netflix show Beef. Uh, so if you haven't seen it, it is on Netflix right now. So you can go and check it out there and then come back to see what we have to say about it because we are going into heavy spoilers for the show. I have seen up to eight episodes. Cheryl has seen the whole thing. We're going to at least spoil the show up until episode eight out of ten. So if you haven't seen it, check it out, then come back to see what we have to say. Let's go ahead and jump right into talking about this. So um, I... I think the best way for, it's hard for me to figure out how to start this conversation about this show. I think the thing I, I'm just going to come out right right out and say is that I I think that I, I love this show. I just hate the characters. <laughs> I, I, I love the show. The show is good. It is objectively a good show. All of these characters suck. All of them are terrible. Like, and I don't mean like terribly written. I mean like they're intentionally terrible people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, and I think that's one of the things that, um, that like it, it's so complex, right? So it makes me feel like these characters are super real because they're so layered. And I feel like at the beginning, you're really rooting for the characters. And then the more you watch the show, the more these layers peel back and you realize that, like you said, they all suck. But then at the same time, you're, like, rooting for them. So you have these two characters, the two main characters, um, Danny and Amy. And they get into this, like, crazy road rage thing. And this one event essentially begins to, like, give them a lot of drama, like, destroying lives and stuff like that. So um, it's, it's, like, how can this one thing between two people explode into this whole like all out war with these two people having beef with each other um and then like the more you learn about them the more you're like oh but i feel for him and then like oh but i feel for her and stuff but then they're bad yeah. they're also bad, bad selfish people. people who are making poor decisions but then I think you kind of feel for them because they're both very depressed and unhappy with their lives. And the other thing that I think is super interesting that they're able to capture in the show is the diversity of people. Even though, like, yes, they're all um, basically Asian, but you have, like, Japanese, you have Chinese, you have Korean, the Korean family. Um but it's also like financially different like where all these characters came from is mm -hmm. also different where you have like this um danny's family is is not like well to do and they have like a uh involvement in some crime with the cousin and then mm -hmm. amy's family uh doesn't they're, they're, uh, her parents are um, immigrants and so they kind of had to make life like you know build their life from nothing and then you have her husband George who was brought up wealthy his parents are artists like they're Japanese mm. artists and you know they had money and stuff like that and then you bring them all together and then you can kind of see how like they're all so different they all came from different places but they're they all equally suck. <laughs> yeah, and they all have like different views on some of them. They have similar views on money, but they also have different views. Mainly, Amy and her husband. Like she says, this whole line to him, where it's like it's always people that grew up with money that feel like money didn't matter, and that's like one of the biggest. That's like a moment where you can kind of see the big difference between her and her husband um, because of their perspectives. Like she puts such a high value on money, and so does, um, and so does Danny. And that is kind of like one of the biggest things about like the similarities between the two of them. The sad thing about Danny and Amy is the fact that they are actually very similar people. They have very similar outlooks. They have very similar goals. It's just that they both have had different challenges or successes in reaching those goals. Amy arguably more so than, than Danny, but they both had kind of similar backgrounds of like where they came up from. Um, as far as like challenges around, like that are 
based around money. And then it gets a little more complicated with like the challenges of how like Amy's father was like treating women or treating his wife um, and things like that. But um, they're actually more similar than than not. But that similarity is kind of also what drives them to just really go at each other because they both have a very bad day where they are just so stressed and ups and upset that they take it out on each other and then they latch on they kind of hone in on this whole idea of i am going to i'm going to i need to hurt somebody i need to hurt somebody because i can't i have no control over anything else in my life so i'm going to hurt you you are going to be the outlet for me to get this stuff that's going on with me out of my system and it's the it, it starts off so benign like just a, a honking of a horn and a flicking of a finger and then you know it becomes a like a, a childish prank of just peeing all over the bathroom and then running out of the place and then it and so if it had just ended there it would have been like okay fine y'all got out of your system we're good but each of them takes it up another notch to the point where it then actively starts to affect the quality of not only their lives, but the lives of the people around them. And like, I, I, we, there's a lot of things we can talk about. The one last thing I'll say before I kick it back to you is that like, one of my favorite moments so far has been when they have a conversation and it's just a real conversation where he goes to this party that she's at and she's like, why are you here? Just leave. And he says, hey, I want to talk to you. And at this point, they both have kind of this, like, there's a time skip, some time has passed. They're both kind of like living their lives, but they still kind of feel like this sense of emptiness. And he's just like, I need to understand, like, is it, does this feeling that I feel go away if I reach your level? And then she confirms to him that it doesn't. And it's like, in that moment, you're like, you two need each other. You guys need to be able to sit down and actually talk about this because you each understand what the other one is going through more so than anyone else in your life. Because you know what these feelings feel like. It's why even when she gives him that answer, he gets it, you know? And the show is really about mental health and how to like deal with it. And that's the thing that I really struck me. It, the show does not feel good. It's not a show that you watch to feel good. It, even if it's a dramedy, like we talked about off stream, like it is, for me, there aren't too many laugh out loud moments. This this show feels more like a drama than it does a comedy to me. And it also feels, like you said, very real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like their beef escalates so much. Like every episode, it gets worse and worse and worse. And I know you hadn't seen the last two episodes yet, but um, it, <laughs> you think it's bad now. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait till you see what they do next. Um, but it's it's interesting, too, because, like, the the way it builds up from the beginning, where it just starts off as, like, road, way, road rage. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then it just kind of, like, gets out of control. And then you would think, like, how much worse can it get? How, how much more can this go on? And it does. And... It might not seem realistic, and maybe to a degree it isn't, but it it feels like the stuff that's happening and the consequences, they make sense based on the actions that the characters are, you know, taking. And I think that's also kind of um, the thing that I feel really pushes the story forward is that it is very action based it's it's um things are happening because of deci decisions that are being made by all the characters not just the main characters but all the characters and even the even the side characters are um all, are kind of bad too and like you kind of sometimes start to see like oh this character is not bad or like you know george is like such a good husband and stuff like that but then you find out things about him and then um you realize that he's also not a good person and um but i think you know that that's kind of true for everybody there's there's no perfect person um and not everyone's gonna like everybody and i feel like that kind of 
plays on that a little bit. Um, but yes, like everyone is, everyone does suck. <laughs> yeah. And, but it's, and it's always interesting how like the other characters kind of get pulled into this whirlwind. Like we talk about Paul and George specifically, they're probably the next characters that are like, like closely tied to like the main characters of Amy and Danny. And it starts off with Danny reaching out to George be from a way of like I'm gonna hurt this person, and Amy reaching out for to Paul because I'm like I'm gonna I'm gonna use Paul to hurt Danny. But in both cases, they actually start liking the people that they're hanging with. They develop a attachment and a kinship with them. I mean, unfortunately, Amy's turns into a full on like cheating affair, um, but it really becomes that because she appreciates having someone to talk to that she just like needs at, at certain times when she's alone and feeling alone she just is, appreciates having someone that's willing to like listen to her and for danny it actually is kind of the same he he likes having this person that he can talk to in a different way that he feels like he can't talk to anybody else in his life so it's really sad because it's like you guys are actually making kind of healthy connections in an unhealthy way that then is going to become dis like it's going to get destroyed because of the fact that the the reason that these relationships were started was with nefarious ideals in mind and you can't get away from that it's going when so many people are lying about who they really are it's only a matter of time before the truth comes out and when the truth comes out these people are going to get hurt and that's exactly what ends up happening. And Paul is kind of like a lovable idiot, but you know he still does some things. Like he steals Danny's truck, and you're like, and even Danny's like kind of cool about that at first. He's just like, yo, I just need my equipment, and then you do you. Um, but then he kind of does something at the end because he gets, or near the end, where he gets angry because of the fact that he finds out that he was used, and he goes and basically blows up Amy's life. And you're like. Yo, dude, I he he did it because he's angry. You understand that, but at the same time, you're like, bruh. And when at the point when you see like the 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 Danny's house gets on fire, you're thinking that that's the result of what Amy did, but it's not, it turns out that's not. But in that moment, you're like, if you just didn't say anything, <laughs> um, and I think, and even just talking about that real quick, that's one of the things that the show does very well is that. It plants these different things that then will pay off at some other time. We have like a really innocu innocuous thing of um, Danny getting this mail from um, things that he didn't subscribe to. And he's like, "Where? why is this coming? And it's just in a moment, it's, ba it's barely even a minute of a scene. And then we find out later that that was done by the actor, I forget the guy's name in the show, but he played Ben in Umbrella the Umbrella Academy. Academy. So yeah, and you find out that he was doing it as a prank, but then it makes it look like he's the one that burned down the house. Um, so like, they have all of these little things that are sprinkled throughout the show that then end up leading to something else later. Even something like um, the picture that that Amy sends to to Paul, and then later on, Danny gets that picture and is trying to use it to like you know pleasure himself, but then later on uses it to actually recognize that she's the one that's been messing with his brother so like all of this stuff it's it's very very well structured yeah even the road rage comes back that that is an integral part of the story later on in the show um that drives the next result of what's going to happen so uh, but yeah, I mean, like the the way they are, they really drag down their um, the people around them, and like it it almost feels like they're black holes where they're just kind of like weighing everyone down with them and in, in their you know bad personness, and <laughs> even at the like at the beginning, I'm like worried about Danny because his cousin is like so chill and he's like yeah man i'll give you twenty thousand dollars it's totally fine and yeah yeah i'll just hang on to your no it's cool you can pay me back whenever but uh yeah i'll just put, put your truck in my name and and stuff like that and i'm like oh man this is gonna turn out so badly later but actually i feel like that guy's so cool like he's he's actually being weighed down by danny you know like 
um, I just keep thinking like, oh, this is gonna turn around and 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 like bite Danny in the butt because he's gonna do something to him and and you know turn out to not be so cool after all. Uh, but then it's actually Danny that's the, the one other way. that's screwing yep. him over and stuff like that. So, um, like, there's all these like big turns where you're thinking like you're led to believe one thing this happens so much with all the characters you're led to think that they're gonna be this kind of character but then the more you learn about them the the further down the journey you go in the show you realize that they're not who you thought they were or they are but they have motivations that you just didn't know about yet and they're doing mm -hmm. things that like this entire time they were in their character you just didn't get to see it you just didn't get to see the other side of them yet but yeah. it's just been disclosed so yeah uh i another character that pops up in my head is the mother uh george's mom um and how she comes across and you find out that she has an angle that she's trying to play as well that ties back to her history and how she was brought up and the struggles that she and her husband had when they were trying to like you know when they were thinking about money and her desire to like continue to be taken care of and the fact that she is in a bad financial situation when and she had a certain expectation for how she wanted to live her life but the moment that her husband passed then that those doors kind of started to close off to her and so now she's actually just struggling to keep the same life that she had without making any changes. Like her lawyer says, hey, you needed to either get a new sources of income, new streams of revenue, or change the way you live. She didn't do either. So because of that, now she's trying to like, she is invested in her daughter-in-law doing better. She's invested in her daughter-in-law keeping a relationship with, with her son so that she can protect her own her own interests and so like even a character like that isn't i mean yeah she's even like you know she's kind of just as bad as everybody else um the only the only the only person that's actually you know innocent is the daughter the little girl <laughs> she's just she's so sweet <laughs> and you feel bad for her <laughs> she's in the middle of all of this just wait Wait till she grows up, then you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this will be just as bad as everybody else. Yeah. Welcome in, Red. So, yeah, and I just, like, I think that the show is objectively, I think it is a good show. I would say that I don't know if this show is for everyone because of the nature of how real the content is. And that's that's the challenge that I have with the show. I think in the chat they said something similar about, like, the way the characters felt and made it a challenge for them to get through the show. I think that this is a show that if you are going through similar feelings of depression or self-loathing or existential dread, existential dread, this show is not going to help that. It's going to make you feel it worse. And I think that that's a good thing because it means that the show is really tackling like this idea in a way that feels prevalent in a way that feels real but i also think that that means that if you are if you haven't really dealt with these issues on your own this show is going to kind of just kind of make you feel that even more yeah it's definitely really real and raw and there were times where i felt like it is hard to watch because it because they are very depressed like all these characters are unhappy none of the characters are happy everyone has something going on that they need to fix no one is um i mean that's not true because half the characters are successful and the other half are not but they're all still yeah. equally unhappy yes and that's like the message right that's mm -hmm. like one of the big things behind why amy and danny are like so similar but then also different because they're at different points and Danny's thinking to himself if I get to where Amy is then that'll be it this feeling that I had that's just always been there that hustle that feeling that it was created by the hustle that might have always been there like it'll go away and she's like no we're just snakes eating our own tails and she talks about how she always feels like she's at the ground and the ground is here 
you know like there's all these very very real descriptions for what this challenge can feel like and yeah and that's that's what makes it tough that's what makes it real and that's also what makes it so that it's it's bingeable because these episodes end and you kind of just you feel like you want to see what happens next to see if things get gets does it get better does it like you're asking yourself the same question the characters are asking does it get better for you do you find a way to to get past this and to get to where you want to be in your life but where where, where i'm at least where i'm at most of the characters lives has been destroyed she's her her husband has amy's husband has asked for a divorce and danny has lost the house that he worked so hard to build for his family and he lost it because of his own his own negligence it's really unfortunate because he he seems like he's good at what he does for the most part like he seems like he really is knowledgeable like he actually is good at this and then you find out that he made a mistake that cost him all of his hard work and cost him his house and because he doesn't want to contend with the fact that he's the one that is the cause of it he's trying to pin it on somebody else who hasn't done who actually is not a part of this anymore Mm -hmm. yeah and let's let's talk a little bit about the acting because i feel like the it's cast so well um the i think ali wong did a phenomenal job acting and um the only person that i think just was a star and acting like that i just i just like if they had an academy award for tv shows which i know it's the golden globes right Mm. um but i feel like this this show should give Stephen Ewan <laughs> an Oscar for best actor. He is it's so, so good. good. Like it just it's like yes, it's it's like dramatic stuff, but it, it like he feels like a like I feel like I was like I was watching real people because of the emotions that were coming across and like even the part like after he he pees in um in her bathroom and then Mm. he's she's like running after him in the street and like you could see the smile on his face and i was like that's so great and like yeah it is sprinkled with these like little bits of comedy and i think maybe uh i know that's i know you didn't you didn't feel Mm -hmm. that it was very comedic but i felt like there were little bits and pieces like these little one-liners that like if you missed it then it's not funny yeah um but i i feel like there was there were a lot of good moments in there where it was like yeah comedian had a hand in this because you know it is it is dark and it is a drama but there were little parts of it like when um another part is when when george is like storming out of the chair exhibit and he like kicks a chair chair. and all these security guards start running towards it like oh my god the art (laughs) (laughs) so there's like it's it's like a uh, i feel like those little things like help digest it a little bit more um but you're right there isn't as much of that as there is in like barry so yeah and it's funny because like hearing you describe like the scenes i remember them and then it makes me laugh and so i wonder if i was to watch this a second time which i don't know if i would but if i was i wonder if i would find it more funny on a second viewing because i'm prepared for all of the the darkness that's going to be coming and the the heavy drama as opposed to at least for my initial viewing where i'm watching and i'm just like i just i just feel like i'm weighed down the entire time because i'm just like this is none of these people are happy everyone is upset and i don't i don't think the show is going to give us an answer um and that's like one of the good things like to go back to like what you were saying about the acting like i mean this steven yuan with steven yuan we've seen him or steven yuan we've seen him on um way back when on walking dead and it wasn't like he was bad on walking dead he was good on that show too but it was there was definitely a different energy on that show than what he's bringing to this show because like you said when he is on this show he feels his character feels real. Like, I forget that I'm looking at an actor. And 
he does these scenes so so well like when he shoot man when he almost burnt a little girl alive in a car and he had stopped and he's like what am i doing and then he goes to the church and he sits there and everybody's singing and everything and he's just kind of like okay yeah this is kind of ridiculous but then like like well, once again also great for like editing and camera work like they just kind of stay on him and he you just see him and something's happening to him and then a wave comes over him and then he just starts breaking down and crying like yo i started tearing up and i was just like i was just watching it and it was just him his his emotion his emotional journey in that like three to four minute scene or however long it was like when he got to where he ended up like that energy like seeped through to me and i it's not like it's a sad scene it's not like something terrible had just happened that is meant to make us cry like someone died or something but his struggle and his re his reconciliation of understanding like i almost just killed a child because of my anger and my desire to get back at this person what am i what have i become like that's one of those moments when i think that yeah you're rooting for him because you want him to be better you believe that he can and then he turns around and like turns in his turns in his cousin so that he can get the money for his place and then he lies about the way the reason the fire happened which you know and you're just like okay dude well what are you doing you're not getting anywhere yeah yeah um there's just so much in this show that's like good and like it I, I just feel like every time something happens like i just can't predict what's gonna happen and yeah. then and then when something happens i'm like oh no oh no oh no and like i think that feeling part of that feeling is because i am rooting for the characters and the the anxiety that you get is because you don't want bad things to happen to them because you feel bad for them um, you want them to make better choices too. yeah <laughs> it's not necessarily like like you know yeah they, they suck and they're horrible people and yeah you want them to do better and stuff but you're I, maybe because you're you're feeling like you don't want more bad things to happen <laughs> not just to them but for like the people around them like uh like when um george gets knocked out by um danny like danny's not there for a good reason but then he basically finds himself in a situation that looks very bad even bad. though his intention is bad but not nearly that bad and you're like oh no like you don't want that like you don't want george to to think that he's there to do something bad even though he is but like not not that bad he's not trying to you hurt know? you yeah exactly like it's just you know uh well it's not even a silly prick it's actually pretty serious to try to frame it's someone but arson. yeah but it, like it, this is completely different this is like like 10 levels <laughs> worse and then and now it and looks then, like kidnapping yeah and then <laughs> junie's in the car and i'm like oh by the way junie she's also very good <laughs> like she's a very good actress um that, oh, yes, that little is. kid i'm like wow i don't know how they got her to to do so well um, that's true you forget that yeah. she's an actress too yeah yeah, yeah that's, that's an act actress little girl yes yeah. how did she end up in his car <laughs> because george said to wait in the car and then she's like oh i want skittles like she knows this guy oh right right so why not right. get in the car there's skittles in there he told me yep so yeah. no that's 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 true so it so, makes sense so all right we're running up on time here <laughs> but before we're done i do want to ask um so you have finished it um one of the things that i was thinking going into the last two episodes is like i really don't know how this ends there have been so many things that have happened that you can't take back so i don't know what the ending looks like for these characters um i guess my question is for you like do you feel like after finishing it that it was a satisfying ending yes okay yes um i i don't want to spoil it for you so i'm gonna refrain from saying any more um but i think we might want to do a revisit um after you finish the season because um 
I would be really interested to hear your thoughts on the ending because um, there, I, I feel like the ending is like these last two episodes are the most impactful out of the whole series, which is why I was kind of like hoping that you would fit. Like, like you told me that you watched four. I was like, oh, okay. And then you, then you said you got to, to six and then eight. Yeah. And I'm like, oh man, you should have just finished it at that point because you're <laughs> just like right on the cusp of like, you know, this, this mm-hmm. grand finale. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's. It, I think it, it might really be worth a revisit. Uh, you can tell me how you feel, but I, I, knowing you, I feel like you're going to want to discuss the last two episodes. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, there's one more thing, because I know we're running short on time. Mm-hmm. Um, there's one more thing I wanted to add or mention yeah. about mm-hmm. it, um, about the show in general, is how um, I really felt like, the target audience 100 percent not even just like me but our age demographic because it happens in the same period of time where we're growing up being adults like we're kind of in the same point of our lives as they are and they even use um music that is familiar to us because it's music that we grew up with and like yeah i'm sure people still like you know uh, of different age ranges are familiar with the music as well but that's like that's our music because that's what we grew up with and it's in the show and we're seeing these characters that are also around our age in the same, you know, milestones in our lives. And I feel like it really hit close to home. And like, for me, like it's even more so because I'm like, they're all Asian. And I really feel like I just watch a show about my life and people that I know and stuff like that. So it really really hit home for me. Yeah, and I think that's one of those successes about the show because it also hit home for me, but I think for a different reason than what it hit home, how it hit home for you. I also felt like I was the target audience. I also felt like I was connecting with this show, um, and it's not and it's not because you know I'm Asian or anything, but it's because of, like you said, the the challenges that they're facing the age range that they're a part of the things that they are experiencing in their own lives all of these things are the things that i felt like i could connect with and i could relate to and that's another reason why it was so easy to just keep watching this show because yeah it did feel like it did feel like a commonality of experience and i think that that's another thing that you know the last kind of thing i want to say is that i I think that that's a testament to the show that it can it's an example of how you can relate to people how can we can how we can relate to each other because we we do have similar experiences there are like differences but at the same time at the end of the day we actually have more in common with each other than we think and that's another thing that's a message I think that's undercurrent that's an undercurrent in that show and that's like why I think that this show is just, I think this show is gonna go down as a classic. It is absolutely up there. So, um, but yeah, that's all the time that we have for today. I think that Cheryl and I will probably come back and revisit this. So if you guys wanna hear us talk more about this, you can check us out on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash c3films. And you can check us out when again, when we come back to talk more about this, uh, the season, the whole season as a whole. But what did you guys think about Beef? Did you enjoy it? Did you like it? Did you think that it's a very well done show? Did you like the acting? Does it speak to you the same way that it spoke to us? What have you thought about it? Comment below, let us know. And while you're down there, if you give us a like, share, subscribe, even if you don't though, I have been Chris and this has been Cheryl and 